Okay, so in this video, we'll create uh, a function in app scripts, uh, which will basically do the same thing that match function does in Google Sheets. So if you're familiar with match function, let's say I'm looking for something, let's say this is the label sales. And what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to look through this range of labels and find out which one which number is sales. So I want to find out one, two, three, four, five, number five column is sales in this range. And I can do that using match functions. So if I do equals match, and this is what I'm searching for, that's my search key, sales, comma, and then the range where I'm searching for that. So I'm gonna go to here and basically look up through all of these over here in this range, I'll do F4 for good practice to lock that range, comma. And finally, the last argument is the search type. So the exact match would be zero. So I'm going to do zero and close and hit enter. So that gives me that five, meaning that it was searching through this range and it found out that number five was sales. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a similar uh, something in app scripts. We want app scripts to look for a column label similar to this and give us the number of that label. So let's get started. This should be pretty easy and fast. I'm going to go here again, tools, script editor, and I'll name this. So Uh, again, uh, I'm not going to go into like basics of app scripts. If you don't know the very basics, go back and watch previous videos, then come back to this one. So we'll just go ahead and get started. So first of all, we have to pull this range uh, over here and make an array out of it in JavaScript. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we have to get to our app. So we'll go our spreadsheet app. So I'll do um, SS for spreadsheet and I'll do spreadsheet app dot and we want our get active spreadsheet, then we get active sheet. That should get us the current worksheet that's open, which is in this case, this one, right? So now at this point, that's going to be my uh, active sheet. Now what I want to do in that active sheet, first of all, I want to basically do this range over here. For that, I, I, uh, and I'm going to have to make it in a way that it's dynamic. So this should work for this, but it should also work for this or this. And you can see that we have uh, more or less columns on different tabs. So we have to dynamically figure out what that range is that we're looking in. It's always in the first row, but the column could be different. So for that, we first have to get what is the last column. To do that, we'll simply just do our SS, our spreadsheet, and then use this method uh, that's called get last column just like that. And we'll assign it to a variable. So we'll do var lc for last column equals that. So that should give us the last column. So now that we have the last column, let's create the range. So we'll do look, look up range. And our lookup range is going to be, uh, we will have to go to our spreadsheet. And then inside of the spreadsheets, we're going to get a range. And that range is going to start in a second row, right? Uh, actually, the first row. First row and the first column. So we're starting in A1 cell. So first row, first column. And the number of rows is going to be one because we're going to be searching in that first row. But the number of columns is going to be however many columns we have, which is going to be this LC variable, our last column. So that's going to be 
the range that I'm targeting. Now I'm going to put that in an array. I'm going to do get values and that should get those values and convert that to an array. Let's just call it lookup range values, I guess, something like that. So that should put those values in an array just to show you what's going on so far. Let's just do logger.log. .log. And let's just log this out to see what we so far have. So I'm going to go ahead and run this function. Should probably name it something different other than my function, but it's fine. We'll take care of it later. So it's going to ask for permissions. I'm going to have to give the necessary permissions here. Again, we've done this millions of times, but and I have a video about how to do this. So we ran that. So at this point, I'm going to go get to my log. So there it is. My log says, see, it got this and it says date, sales rep, region, state, brand, sales, cost of goods, which is basically what I had here. Now, the thing is that if you really closely look here, it's not an array. It's an array of arrays. So you can see that there is this in square brackets, which is in turn in a square bracket. And what it's doing, it's basically saying that this is the first row. And in this row, we have the columns because we don't have a second row. There is no comma and another array. So we don't want that uh, at all. We just want this inside part, inside array in it. So to get to it, we just have to get to the first value in our array. So uh, if we simply, we should be able to just do this, the first thing in our array. So let's save this, run it. And let's look at our log. Perfect. So there, we don't have the second set of square brackets anymore. So it's a single array of our column labels. So right now we just have to search through this and find out where is whatever it is that we're looking for. So first of all, uh, let me just put a lookup value. That's what we're searching for. And we're going to be searching for sales label. And now let's search for that ser sales value, lookup value inside of this range. So to do that, we're going to use a method and that's a JavaScript array method. And because this is an array that we have, we can use a method on it. And that method is index off. And you can see it shows up right there. And basically, this is what we're searching for as an index off. So if I search for this lookup value, what we're searching for. So basically, we're saying, can you tell me, uh, where this is in this array. And let's just assign it to a variable var index, I guess, equals this. And let's just log that out. So I don't need this log up, logging here anymore because we already know what that is. So we'll just log out this one. Save. Let's run this function. Let's see what we got. So log. So that gives us five. All right. So let's go take a look. So it says number five is sales. So we're going to go here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it says, well, we see here it's number six, but it says it's number five, right? So the reason for that is that in JavaScript arrays, the count starts from zero. So what really it's doing, it's doing zero, one, two, three, four, five, and number five is sales. But to make it work the same way as the match function, we want to make sure that whatever it's returning to us, it's going to be, you know, starting from one. So 
if it starts from zero, then if it gets to this one, it's gonna say five, but we really need six. It's always one more than what it tells us, right? So all we have to do is simply just say that our index is that plus one. So that should give us the column. So if I run this, see, it gives us its number six. So if I move to a different tab, and this one is one, two, three, four, five, number five, right? We run the same thing. See, it's number five. And if we move to a completely different one, like this one, it should be three, right? So run logs. So it says three. Now, uh, what's also probably interesting to check if what if we do something like this, right? Uh, where, what if it's not available? Because we don't have any labels here. So we have sales here, but we're only searching here for the labels. So let's search and see what we get. Logs, so we got zero. So we, when we don't find it, we're getting a zero. In all the other cases, we get a number. So that's the way how this is gonna work out. Now. The next thing we want to do with this, we probably want to uh, basically make this a little more reusable. So we want to convert it to a function where we can provide the name of the tab and we can provide what we're searching for and it should tell us where in which column it's located. And to do that, we're gonna move this whole thing to its own function. So I'm gonna just copy and paste that. And we'll call this function get column index. Why not? So what I want to do, I want to be able to provide two things, the name of the tab and the label that I'm looking for. So if I'm searching for state in this tab, I want it to search and find it and give me where it is, right? So to do that, I'm going to do basically the label and we'll do sheet name. Those are two things we're gonna provide this function. So basically our lookup value is that label that we're searching for. So maybe I should just call it lookup value, or maybe I should have called it label, doesn't matter. So uh, I guess let's do label, that's fine. Now I don't need this variable. I could just say it equals label, but it's redundant. I don't want to do that. So instead, I'm going to just go here when we're using that and I'm gonna put label instead. So we're gonna be searching for the label that this function is providing to it, right? So that's okay. Now the next thing we want to do is this. So right now what we're doing, we're going to the current active spreadsheet and we're getting the current tab that's currently basically open. Now instead, I want to get to the tab that we want. So to do that, instead of doing get active sheet, we're gonna do get sheet by name method. And semicolon here. So now we can just search for that sheet that we provide here. And if we search for that, we then gonna get that particular spreadsheet that we were looking for here. And then we're gonna do this whole thing after that. Now, finally, what we want to do, instead of logging it out, we want, because this is a function, we're gonna have to return that index. So there it is. This should convert that to a function that we should be able to use. Now, I should be able to just go here and do something like this. I should be able to just say, Basically, we're trying to use this function, right? So I can say variable index equals to, and I'll paste that function here. And for label, I'll do sales. And for the name of the sheet, we'll do 
this one. Over here. So save that. Now let me run this function, which should then in turn use this function to get the index. So I'm going to go here, run view logs. So five. So it says that sales is one, two, three, four, five column. Now, what if we're searching for it in here? Let's say in here, we want to search uh, state. So I'm going to go here and say, well, let's say this is what we're searching for. And we're searching, f well, where we're searching for, I guess. And this is what we're searching for state. So I'm going to run that again. And hopefully that should give us See, so it gives us four. So number four, it says is state. Perfect. And we should be able to use this function in our worksheet as well, the same way. So if I copy this, because we made a function out of it, if I go to here and just simply say equals this, which is what I had there. So basically get column index, and then we're searching for state. Uh, maybe instead of doing that, we'll search for this, right? And we'll search in partial data to tab. So it gives us six. Let me move this over here, paste. So we're replacing the match function with our function. So we're looking for sales in partial data to tab. So if we're changing this to partial data one, uh, it's still apparently number five in partial data one and that's our sales. So what what if we look for state? So it says it's number three. So there it is. Finds it, no problem. If we look for brand, it should be number four. There we go. So basically it's dynamically now figuring out how many columns we have and then it's acting based on that, right? So again, you could use match function and that's what you should be using if you're doing something in the spreadsheet, not this. But in app script, uh, sometimes you're gonna want to do something like this. You're gonna want to search to know which column you're in to do some you know, calculations. So you might want to go through your different tabs and find out your total sales, right? So, and for that, you would have to find out where the sales column is and see, oh, okay, so we have this one. And then we have in this tab, we have sales column that's in a different position. And you might want to sum all of this, those numbers up. And for that, you might want to know what column all that is in. So uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to end this video on this, but later I'm going to create another video to show how we can combine all of this data from these different three tabs together for the columns we need. So let's say we're trying to get region, state, and sales to our master sheet like this, but it's not exactly in the same order in different tabs that we're combining. So we're going to create a script that will just find the information from the right columns from these different tabs and combine it on a master tab. But that's going to be on an upcoming video. All right. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.